census was taken in the year 2000, and uh, they're now analyzing the data. And what they have discovered, Howard, is blacks and whites don't live together. So uh, You know what else they've discovered? What? Uh, and I don't know if this is true. I think it might already be true in California. That white people are a minority, I think, in California. In California, but not right? in the entire country. Yeah, well, see, a lot of white people don't like that. <laughs> I can't wait to be a minority. Oh, There's you a lot of stuff I have been wanting to do. <laughs> right. I want to roll up in my car and annoy people with my music. <laughs> I want a guy next to me going, turn down that Neil Diamond, man. What's up with that? <laughs> I have a dream that one day I will stand up in a movie theater and go, run, bitch, the monster coming. <laughs> Can't wait to be a minority. <laughs> You're looking forward to it. You're going to stand gonna up in a movie this. theater when I you said, become a minority. Bitch. You got a good point there. I got Howard. I can't wait to be a minority. Finally, street hookers well, I can talk to. Right. Look, it's not going to happen. <laughs> soon. To a girl in an ankle suit, <laughs> drinking a Starbucks, and you know, talk to her about the stock market. Do you know how many white me. people are in this country? How many? You see, you don't even know. No, uh, how many? Not enough. Two <laughs> hundred. 70 million white people. Oh, we're never going to get to be minorities in this and lifetime. Do you know how many black people there are? How many? 36 million. Wow. But, black so, people, but black people aren't the only minority, though. No, but still, they're 270 million. <laughs> the of only here. one I care about, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, so don't think it's going to happen so soon. I can't wait. Well, you were saying that they did a study. I don't know how much money they wasted on this. But they did a study to find out. That black people and white people aren't living together. No matter what you do, you can't get black people and white people to live together. Well, my entire childhood was spent trying to live in a black neighborhood <laughs> uh, and trying to convince white people to stay, and it's impossible. <laughs> Once a couple of black people move in, that's what it. What is that? Well, I'll tell you what happens. Because I, I saw it firsthand. It's a white community, and then all of a sudden, a black guy moves in on the block. Yeah, the why guy, does that cause a panic? Okay. The guy living, the, the two houses next door to the black family, uh -huh. I sit there going, wait a second. <laughs> I got to sell my house now, and I'll tell you why. I'm never going to be able to sell it because there's blacks there. But and it's gonna, one black. No, 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 it doesn't matter. It, the house right next door to the blacks. I'm telling you what happened, okay? Don't say it's right, right or wrong. All right, there's, there's some faulty logic here. I know. Wrong. The logic's way faulty because yeah. if everybody stood ground, it, wouldn't be, it would be an integrated community. But what happens is you go, okay, if I sell today, I get the black. It's still a white community. No <laughs> problems. I'll sell. You go and you sell, and then they show another black family the house because they can't sell it to a white guy. White family won't go won't in, move next won't door, move to, next door to a guy. black because right. they figure, well, you know what? The price is going to go down on the house, and they'll better resell. And no, I'm telling you, that's the way it is. I don't care what community you move. You go to Roslyn, Long Island, one of the wealthiest white communities in the world. You see, uh, there are black families living there. No one will buy the house next to the black family because they're afraid it'll go down in value or never be able to sell uh, it Robert, again. He just described my block to a T. Okay, now wait, now wait, because I lived through this. So then another black family moves in. Now, once you sell to the blacks, I'm talking about the second family mm -hmm. now. They can't tell any of their white neighbors because the white neighbors will go berserk. Exactly. So they sneak out in the middle of the night. In the middle of the night, <laughs> you wake up and there's you black people Howard, living yeah. next door to you. Howard, please let me tell the story because yeah. I gave it to tell the story before you, before you even spoke. Yeah. Where I grew up, right, the houses were very close together. It had this little hurricane fence about three feet tall behind us. There was an old guy who lived there, um, probably about 70 years old or so. Nicest guy in the world. Nicest guy. My mom gets up in the middle of the night uh -huh. to get a drink of water. I'm talking 3 a.m. And there's a moving truck in the driveway. 3 a.m.? Right. 3 a.m. How do you get a moving truck to come at 3 a.m.? Because you pay extra because you don't want your, he you doesn't don't want want your neighbors, neighbors to, know. to know. Because if, if the neighbors, they're all going to yell He sold to blacks. He oh, sold to a black family, but it was the funniest thing. No, like the whole, he didn't, nobody knew he had sold the house. No. No. They don't even put up a first there was no. a, I don't know it was a sign for his house. Right. And then after he left... You know, my mother was the only one that knew. The rest of the neighborhood didn't even know anybody had moved. <laughs> so then that's this now. Now you have a community with three blacks, let's say. That's it. That's it's all. Everybody starts to say, <laughs> oh, my God, they sold to blacks. If I don't sell right now. Now, but everybody acts like there's going to be a big. Yeah. It's a mass psychosis. But, but there's if a head nobody for the else hills. sold their houses, nobody else could get in. If they just stood there. But nobody stands their ground because whoever is next door to the blacks thinks that their house now is worth less. So and, little by little, everybody next door to yeah, a black house. And you're dealing, and by the way, you're dealing in communities where the average house, at least when I was growing up, was worth 
fourteen thousand when the people bought it, right. and now the property was worth thirty thousand, between twenty eight thousand and thirty thousand. So these guys would sit there and go, "Oh my God, I'm going to I'm going to lose my all my savings. Yeah, Everything's going to be gone. My it's equity." Going. So it's not a race issue, it's a real estate issue. Well, it is a race issue, but it's and also it's real cool. estate. Yeah. You know what, H Howard, in, in my neighborhood, we're talking about a block and a little dead end, another little block of 20, I'd say 20 to 22 houses. By the time the first black family moved in, the only, there were three white families left in the neighborhood. My parents, my overnight. My parents and like two other families. Yeah. It, it was in three It years. happens overnight. I used to go to friends' homes. Friends. Friends of mine. I would ring the doorbell to go play with my friend Larry. <laughs> Black people would answer the door, and they go. Oh, Yesterday, Larry was there. Yeah, I go. W where's Larry? They moved out. Head oh for Z Hills. Well, did you ever, did you ever go see somebody who you could see all the obvious signs that the house was for sale? Not a sign, uh -huh. but other obvious signs that the house was for sale or had mm. been sold, and they would vehemently deny it. Oh. You'd go in and you'd see boxes, right? And the furniture had you know covers on it, and you knew no one who was living there, and you'd say, "You guys moving? Oh no, no, we're not moving." Yeah, uh -huh. yeah, you had to keep it quiet. So anyway, that's how it happens. Well, uh, they are now saying, you know, because there's been so many efforts at uh, integration, they are amazed at how segregated the country still is. Well, I it's, had the one. Uh, I had the one parent who said to me, "We are standing our ground. We are staying. We don't. Care. We're not afraid of black skin." I said, "What do you mean we are not afraid of black skin?" <laughs> what do you mean we, white man? Mom, you're not afraid of black skin. <laughs> Where I grew up, they were blacks all the time. You know what I'm going to uh, ask you about that? I yeah. know that your parents were the last family. To yes. Leave. Why did they eventually leave? Because finally, they saw for the first time, I don't know what made it click for them, they saw that I was the one white kid in an entire sea of black people. And they saw that I was unhappy. It was the first time they were willing to look at the facts. My mother saw nothing wrong with putting me through that. Now, maybe she's right. Maybe it made me a better man. But uh, she had rose-colored glasses on. I mean, there was a lot of problems. Ahead of her time. No, she, she still hasn't found she's her She's still time. ahead of her time. I'm telling you, it's not working. Her time is about 20,000 years ahead of now in the time machine. They should put my mother in there and send her off in the space shuttle. You know, I, I felt so bad. In my neighborhood, a black family you know, moved in, and people like you know paint through paint at their house and, and tortured the kids, and they had to move out. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, well, that's the way it's typically done. You know, what the weird thing? <laughs> you know what the weird thing was in my neighborhood? My neighborhood yeah. was a very like middle-class, blue-collar neighborhood. And for the most part, when a family moved out close to a black family, for the most part, the black family that moved in made the house better. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? My family just... finally moved out when they saw that I was literally one of three <laughs> white people left and that, that I was not happy. But I would never complain about it. So you couldn't live with black people? I couldn't. And my mother even said, I'm not moving. I would stay here. It's because of you. <laughs> In other words, I was the failure. <laughs> and my father was like, well, I'm... Uh, I'm going to get a lot less for my house, and I paid fourteen thousand dollars, <laughs> and these new houses we're looking at are fifty thousand dollars, and I don't have I, 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 and I was just like, oh gee, I feel great. That was, you know, that yeah, was, I didn't feel like too much of a schmuck. That was my dad's deal. My dad's deal was just, you know what? Just let's, you know, everybody stay calm. It's all going to work Wait itself out. out. <laughs> Wait out the storm. Wait out the storm. Keep waiting. You, know what, you ever see when, when like the, uh, oh, the my the dad, yeah, circle yeah, right. <laughs> my dad, my dad was so proud of the fact that all the other people who left got under fourteen thousand dollars because they they had a fire sale. Uh, <laughs> we were able to get, I think, twenty six thousand for the house see? because Holy we God. held out. I just thought of a great plan for the black people, Robin. <laughs> yes. They're based on what Howard's saying. A bunch of black people who want to move up into a different neighborhood uh -huh. all chip in and buy one house. <laughs> and then knock down the value of all the other houses, move in and take over a lot. Well, well, that's what the happens. Blacks didn't think of it. No, actually, were speculators who thought of it. Yeah, there were the, the, the people really? they blamed in Roosevelt were the realtors because yeah. they would target communities right. to and do this. And they would only show houses to blacks. That's right. Because they knew there'd be tremendous turnover right. if they could turn a community yeah, black. Their ideas are taken. There's yeah. nothing to sell in that community but see, anymore. You're not that original. Yeah. That's the good thing about you know raising kids in, in, in Manhattan because they go because you know my kid goes to school with blacks and uh, Puerto Ricans. Well, I don't know what Indian. school that is. Her father's but... Puerto Rican. <laughs> what? Her father's Puerto Rican. I know, but that's good. I I, I think that's a good thing. There's diversity in her own home. Exactly. You don't think that's good? 
Uh, what, what diversity? Yeah. I'm, a, I'm not no, a big fan not of it. <laughs> Come on. I've been I've been involved in diversity. It's yeah. not Wait, good. Didn't you go to college with with, with you know all different? Uh, no, no. Well, so they don't have blacks in that college. No, 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 no. Get out of here. No. Diversity worked for me, John. It didn't work for me. For Robin, it works. Because I went to NYU, there was every race. I religion. believe everybody should just calm down. That's all. Well, Everybody should get along just with themselves. By themselves. Everybody say? should have their own community. So you're for segregation? No, I'm not for segregation, but I, I believe that uh, are you the against, races don't get along. But are you, you're not for segregation, but are you against forced integration? No, I'm against that. It's not. It never works. I'm against all these parades. <laughs> What's Thank you. Parade? I am too. He's against everything. Yesterday, I'm against was, parades. Was it the Puerto Rican parade yesterday? No, no, no you missed that one. You'll know. You'll know. Puerto that. Rican parade. No, it was That's the Puerto. A, no. There was some parade going on here. You'd always know when the Puerto Rican Day parade. Yeah, yeah. These parades, they close down the whole city. It's, Puerto, it's, it's, all parades should be banned from Manhattan. I you know, live in West Hollywood. They have a gay parade. Yes. They got that here. They have it oh, here, yeah. too. Yeah, it's, Halloween. Sure. it's in Halloween. I yeah. just feel so left out. There's like, you know, I don't. there's no parade for my sexual preference. <laughs> Why don't they have a masturbator's parade? <laughs> right. I could be up there waving with one hand. You'd be the head guy. You got it. <laughs> you know, what kind of, what kind of costumes float. do you wear for that? You know those parades start in, uh, those parades on Fifth Avenue start, like, I think the first week of June. It is the Ukrainian parade, mm -hmm. the Israeli parade. The Irish parade. I mean, it just goes. It's, there are groups I never knew existed. They have parades. Ugandan parade. Yeah. It's like right. stuff you never even heard of. All right, let's listen. We got. Well, we got. I was trying to make a point here when you guys jumped off with your discussions about how our neighborhood is ruined. Trying to teach you. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, let me just hear, have this guy speak. His name is Carl Hobb. He actually studied the numbers, oh. and this is what he has to say. Who paid for this? <laughs> the, he is actually a part of the private population reference. Bureau. What's the guy's name? Carl Haub, and it's uh, number 10. Okay, I got it. Because he has something important to say. Oh, this is so funny. In many, many cases, we have simply left our cities behind. There's been some gentrification, but when you think about it, the U.S. is really one of the very few countries of the world that builds great cities and then basically walks away from them. Not true. That's exactly true, and he says oh. one of the best examples of that <laughs> is, you know, Detroit. Oh, that's true there. Detroit is a yeah. black city. Every suburb around it is white. Yeah, somebody, somebody told me that Detroit is like a big donut. Yeah. The outside of it is all white. Yeah, I, I live there. Donut. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty frightening. I I worked in downtown Detroit, and it's, uh, it's a scary neighborhood. <laughs> but was that ever a great city? Uh, yeah, yeah, one point, yeah. But you know what's point, weird? Yeah, all the motor guys were there for Detroit, you, it's one main road like you go through, and there's all these burnt-out buildings and yeah. everything, and I had my radio station was there in a house. You go... A couple of blocks outside of Detroit, literally there's a line, and then it's called Gross Point, and it's lily white and one of the wealthiest communities you'll ever see. Yeah. Isn't that sort of like, um, isn't Washington, D.C. pretty similar? Yeah. You could go, like, Georgetown, all white, everything, but you but go Washington down downtown. Has two centers. Yeah. It's like the very center of the city. You know, like, it turns, it's like the Wizard of Oz. You know, like, <laughs> you cross a certain line, it's like, oh! Everything turns white and beautiful, yeah. and then you have to run to the far outskirts in Maryland and Virginia. Yeah, you head for the hills. <laughs> All right, what else does this guy say? Anything? Uh, I'm just saying that he said Detroit was a, a oh. perfect example okay. of that, where it has a majority population of black people now, and all of the suburbs. It's almost a completely black city, and all of the suburbs are white. So right. He left out the part of why they abandoned him. They don't just no, get no, up no, no, one no, day no, no, and go, no, no. let's all leave. It, you, can't, you can't leave and then expect everything to stay fine. Yeah. He's right. saying white people build cities and then run from them. That's all. So you got to stop doing that. We're okay. abandoning our cities and building cities in the suburbs. I'll have a white people meeting. Please, please call the white people together. When she would do